Your team needs to hear your mission and your vision 25 times before it sinks in. And sometimes you sound like a broken record, but until they say, we know what the mission is, you've told us it 25 times, then they're just finally starting to get it. Good morning, good morning, Impact fans. What's happening? This is Todd Durkin, and we have yet another epic episode of the TD Impact Show. And today, we talk in leadership. Yes, leadership. We have so many requests on our Q&As for leadership, so I thought I would bring my best version of of leadership at all levels. So regardless of your role, regardless of your title, this episode is going to impact you. Now this question comes specifically from David Isaacson, Orlando, Florida, who's a senior vice president of Greystone Consulting, which is the institutional arm of Morgan Stanley. This is what David asks. Todd, what are your top leadership tips that high-performance companies, teams, and organizations do that build iconic cultures and brands? Ho, ho, ho. I like this question, David. We talk about iconic cultures and brands uh, because for the past 20 years here at Fitness Quest 10, that's what I've been striving to do and getting the opportunities to work for iconic companies like Under Armour, like TRX, like many of the, the brands I've had the opportunity to work with over my career. Uh, I've had an inside view of what it takes. I'm going to share 10 principles today on uh, leadership at all costs, at all levels. But when it comes to leadership, I want to share a story, story with you. It comes from actually a General Colin Powell, and I like this. Uh, it's about a second lieutenant. There was a brand new second lieutenant who was very ambitious and wanted to be a general. So one night at the officer's club, the young officer spotted his old general sitting at the bar. So he went up to the general and said, General, how do I become a general? And the old general answered, Son, you got to work like a dog. You got to have moral and physical courage. There may be days you're tired, but you must never show fatigue. You'll be afraid, but you can never show fear. You must always be the leader. The young officer was so excited by this advice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, he said. So this is how I become a general? No, said the general. That's how you become a first lieutenant. And then you keep doing it over and over and over again. General Colin Powell talks about throughout his career uh, doing the best you can today, thinking about tomorrow, and maybe dreaming a bit about the future as well. But doing your best in the present has to be the rule. Doing your best in the present has to be the rule. You won't become a general unless you first become a great first lieutenant. So I share that little story with you because you think about where do you want to go? How do you lead a company? How do you lead a team? How do you lead an organization to, to develop that iconic brand or culture that you, you so desperately want? Let me ask you a question for anyone listening today. And by the way, this is just me solo today, me and you having a cup of coffee or protein shake and uh, talking about leadership. And why are we talking about this? Because many times you want to run a successful organization and you want to create this this thriving, positive uh, work environment that's purpose-driven, it's profitable, and of course it's impactful. Let me start by saying what leadership is not. Uh, leadership is not pretty. Leadership is tough. Leadership is not uh, sometimes all it's cracked up to be. Many times it's lonely. Leadership is challenging. Leadership is uh, going to often challenge you to the absolute core Right? These are things that sometimes when you want to, quote, become a leader, I want to become a leader, you don't see that you know, there's bullets, literally bullets flying at you sometimes. And whether you're in the military listening in today or whether you are uh, at the helm as the CEO, the owner, the, the general manager, the assistant general manager, you're the director of a program, you're leading a small team, once you become a leader, it never is as easy and as pretty as you think. And if you're in that position now, you know what I'm talking about. You know, I was reading a book recently called The Motive by Patrick Lincioni. And I've, I've read a lot between John Maxwell, uh, you know, Robin Sharma, uh, Dave Ramsey, Lincioni. And 
Lincioni was talking about uh, sometimes leaders need to forget some things as well. So in these 10 different aspects, these 10 aspects, um, it's going to be rapid fire. This is Q&A, and I like to keep moving. I want to welcome you. If any of these points out of the 10 resonate with you, don't be shy to share it. Don't be shy to share one of these points uh, over on your social media and take one of them and share it with your team. Because I think uh, great leaders have the ability to communicate and and ultimately uh, create a discussion amongst your team. And if you're not in an organization, if you're a one man or a one woman show, you're a solopreneur. Uh, don't forget, you e- you even have to lead at home as well. If you're a parent or you're a kid in school, we're talking leadership at all levels. Truly, number one, great leaders, great leaders. Number one, they have to have uncomfortable and difficult conversations. Right. So sometimes you, you as a leader, you don't think about that. But a lot of times you have to have uncomfortable and difficult conversations with your your teammates. And sometimes these are your friends. Uh, but as a colleague, the best leaders have to have uncomfortable conversations that, hey, here's the expectation. And if someone's not fulfilling the expectation, well, then you've got to give feedback. I often use the sandwich technique, right? You set the expectation, and then you have to give some, some, sometimes some tough love, some, some feedback about how they could do a better job or what they're not doing well, and then you give an out of boy or an out of girl. Um, but great leaders, you have to give uncomfortable and difficult conversations many times, and this isn't always something that's in the leadership book, that when you, when you take on a new role, when you accept the task, you didn't get this in your, quote, leadership manual. Number two, Leaders, great leaders, have to prepare and run effective meetings. Does anyone love meetings out there? Anyone? No, I didn't think so. But how do you create meetings that are actually effective? Because the bottom line as let's say, a CEO, the chief executive officer, or the chief energy officer, as I like to say, the chief energy officer, how are you giving energy? Meetings are important. Don't think that every meeting you have to have is, has to be an hour long. It doesn't. Meetings can typically done be done in 10 to 20 minutes when you just cut to the chase and get to it. If we have an all-up meeting here at Fitness Quest 10, we've got 42 teammates, they typically start with shout-outs. And the reason we start with shout-outs is because you're acknowledging and you're praising your your, your colleagues, your teammates on that. And many times, uh, we don't uh, do that enough within an organization, right? We want to make sure we're constantly praising, acknowledging our people and that the colleagues are doing the same thing. The number one reason why anyone would leave an organization is because not feeling appreciated enough. And leaders, you know it as well as I. The last I checked, all of us are really, really busy. How can you slow down enough and catch people doing good things and give give the affirmations when they're deserving along with Obviously, number one, we talk about difficult conversations. When you need to have those difficult conversations and they are uncomfortable, you need to have them. The shout outs and then you have the agenda and you get to it. And the other thing I believe is important with meetings is emotion, leading with emotion. When you study leadership, level five leaders, the the, the most heightened leaders lead with emotion. And that's a heart-centered leader. And you're going to hear me talk about it uh, throughout today's episode. But Sometimes leaders, especially young leaders, are afraid to lead with emotion because you don't want to show your vulnerability. But what I've realized in my leadership over 25 years in my career is that when you show emotion and you share emotion, it actually connects your tribe of people and makes it real. So show emotion. In, and I'm not saying that every, every meeting has to be emotional. No. But uh, don't be afraid to get emotional and to share stories on that. And then lastly, every meeting, there has to be a call to action. There has to be a call to action for what you and your team are going to be doing. So make sure those meetings are effective. Number three, great leaders must be in constant team building mode. Now, you think about that. I think of like uh, a coach, Bill Belichick, right? Uh, you, you know, you think about team building. You're looking at chemistry. You're looking at culture. You're looking at camaraderie. It's constantly tweaking the chemistry of the team. How do you be in constant team building mode? Whether it be activities, uh, like here for us at Fitness Quest 10, we like to do workouts with our teammates. We'll have some meetings where, hey, it's a group workout. Or perhaps you want to have a team dinner. Or you want to have a function with your team that includes their families. Because their families are important. And if you can get a culture and create a culture that's very family-oriented, then your people are going to have a much more enjoyable experience in that. Maybe it's going to a baseball game or a football game or participating in a softball uh, game where it's, you know, clients versus the team, or you're just going to uh, mix up who's there. But you want to think about constantly 
be in team building mode. Even here, uh, sometimes we'll bring in speakers to uh, to speak with our 42 teammates or me or one of our other teammates will actually then, with our members and clients here, do talks, motivational talks or educational talks to our team. Again, that is constantly team building our culture, our team, and our tribe as well. Number four, great leaders repeat themselves. (laughs) <laughs> Let me repeat that. Great leaders repeat themselves. I love that. That was from Lincioni, and I was laughing when I heard it because that comes down to communication, right? Your your CRO, your you know your your chief uh, your chief communications here. Okay, uh, here's the deal: Can your teammates can they make fun of you and mimic you? Because if they can, you're doing a good job. You want to make sure that your teammates can actually make fun of you and imitate you because you keep saying the same thing over and over. I can't tell you the number of times my actually teammates laugh at me because I like you've introduced me to this person like 30 times, right? But I once heard Dave Ramsey talk about your team needs to hear your mission and your vision 25 times before it sinks in. And sometimes you sound like a broken record, but until they say, we know what the mission is, you've told us it 25 times, then they're just finally starting to get it. So leaders, don't be afraid to repeat yourself as it could be a huge aspect in communication, right? That's an important aspect there. Number five, leaders genuinely love and care for their people. Now, what does that mean, love and care for their people? You know, they, now you fill in the blank here. They don't care how much you exactly know until they know how much you care. It comes down to caring for people more. Everyone that you touch at the workplace, you have to truly, genuinely care for. You have to slow down enough to care for. One of the best practices that we do at Fitness Quest 10 and that I do as a leader is I share my W lags every Sunday with my team and they do the same with me. It helps the leadership. What's the W lags? If you've never heard uh, me speak before, you haven't been coached by me before, uh, the W lags is your wins from the last week, your losses from the past week, and your aha moments from the past week, along with your most important, pertinent, pertinent pressing goals for this upcoming week. Now, why is that important to reflect back? Because when I look at my teammates' ahas and losses, I know when I'm conversing with them what they're working on. Maybe they're having a difficult time at home. Maybe someone has a health scare. Maybe something's, someone has something going on outside of work that in the communication, I understand them better. So when I make a request for work, it's not just I have an agenda. They've got to get it done. But you can do your best to empathize with them with where they're at and to me that's great leadership as well even at fitness quest 10 some of the things we do to recognize and care for our people we have the grinder of the month this is one of our teammates who is uh recognized every month as the grinder of the month someone who is uh putting forth a lot of effort and going above and beyond the call of duty to make sure our culture continues to stay at world class um You've heard me talk about servant leadership. We talk about servant leadership. That's leading with your heart. To me, that's genuinely loving and caring uh, for your people as well. Now, the next one, number six on this. Great leaders are driven by vision. Great leaders are driven by vision. Let me ask you a question. What's the vision for your company? Where are you going? What gets you up out of bed every morning? You know, see, for, for your mission and your vision... The vision is we are going to impact 10 million lives by what we do. The mission is I am designed to get up every day and to create impact today. We're going to transform. Our mission is to transform the body, minds, and souls of our clients who come through the doors every day. That's our mission at Fitness Quest 10. When you think about your mission, your vision for your company, Regardless of the career that you're in, regardless of the occupation you're in, regardless of the title you're in, I want to ask you, what's the vision for your life? What's your vision? When you look out through the windshield, which is 10 times bigger than the rear view mirror, when you look through the windshield, what do you see? What drives you? When you get to the point where your heart is so fired up with emotion and energy, that becomes your vision. And my vision is I want to be a life transformer to make sure that I can impact those 10 million people in my lifetime. The vision is through health, fitness, motivation, and inspiration will do that. What are you driven by? 
What's your vision of the world and how are you going to get there? Create the strategy, create the game plan. But the strategy and the game plan is not enough. That typically doesn't get you juiced up, as I say. You got to have that vision. And I want to know what your vision is, so don't be afraid to share your vision with me. Literally write your vision down, put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram or wherever you hang out, and then tag me. Because this world needs more great leaders. And I believe great leaders are driven by vision. They're driven by mission. And that alone is going to change the world. Next, number seven. Great leaders lead during tough times. Tough times. So when you think about tough times, what adversity are you facing today? What adversity have you faced in the past when you think about great leaders and persevering through tough times? I mean, you can go back all the way through history and look at guys like Abe Lincoln, Walt Disney. These were visionaries. These were leaders who faced tough times. I'm talking bankruptcies, divorces, breakdowns, and continued to persist. Now think about even like, okay, well, you might be like, well, Todd, I'm not, I, I, it's not that bad. I'm just, it's hard dealing with people. Yes, it is. But that's why you're a leader. That's why you've grown into a position. Have you ever like driven away from your company? You're like, man, I wish I didn't have such a big team. Or I wish I didn't have a team. Yeah, but guess what? Then your vision couldn't be as big because you can't, you can't fulfill the vision of what you want by yourself many times. So when you think about leading during the tough times, you first have to slow down, step away, and work on yourself to get clarity. And many times for me, that clarity comes in the mountains or it comes at the beach. It comes at a retreat. It comes when I'm actually not working necessarily on the business. I just step away in a workout, on a hike, on a climb, on a downhill ski, which I love skiing. And next thing you know, you step away from the everyday minutia that you often have to deal with as a leader. And the next thing you know, you're like, hey, you know what? Okay, I'm going to create this communication plan with this employee or I'm going to share these goals which is going to help drive the vision to change a million lives through the service that we offer think about that great leaders lead during the toughest of times number eight great leaders grow other leaders yes great leaders grow other leaders That means you have to be constantly providing growth opportunities for your current teammates, your current employees. So what are you doing to do that? How are you stretching your people to become better? You want to attract growth mindset people, not fixed mindset, because if they're fixed mindset, they're not looking to grow. And if you're in a service business like I am at Fitness Quest 10 and what I do, you want to really encourage your people to constantly be learning by listening to podcasts like this. Share this with your teammates, please. Share this with your social media, please. It'll help people grow. What books are you reading that are constantly fueling your body and your brain and your mind with great fertile soil. Read great books as it will stimulate your brain to think more openly and to think bigger. But you have to do the same thing with your teammates, constantly offering them new educational opportunities, taking them away to conferences. Again, what is your industry? Take them to an industry event. I know uh, we just went to a Brendan Burchard event here recently, and it was an amazing experience to have over a dozen teammates go to this Brendan Burchard event. Like, when you do that, you step away from the trenches, you step away from the everyday what you're doing. So whether you go to an outside event, you come to a retreat that I'm leading or someone else is leading, all of a sudden, that fosters the growth mentality. And this is really, really good. So when you grow other leaders, you're then looking to see how can my organization grow and how can I grow these people to fit into roles that we create. Now, let me answer the question that you're all thinking. But Todd, what if what they want to grow and how they want to grow doesn't fit with how you want to grow? Well, that's a tricky one. First off, it comes down, if you are the leader of your organization, you have to come up with, that's why the vision's important of where you're going, because it has to first fit the vision of your company. And then you want to grow people within your company, within your brand. And then as you do that and elevate people up, realizing that we is bigger and better than me. We is bigger and better than me. Can you take one skill set? Can you take one's growth mindset and put them into a role that will allow them, you, and the company to grow? So number eight is great leaders grow other leaders. Number nine, great leaders make hard decisions. 
So if you're a leader, what are the hardest decisions you make on an everyday basis? And that comes down to hiring, that comes down to firing, that comes down to how you're leading your people, where you can improve, because the last I checked, all of us can continually always become better as a leader. And I think these points I'm sharing, um, at least one or two or three of them are probably resonating with, yes, I can improve in this area. That takes time. That takes practice. Uh, I recently shared something uh, that I learned from the Brendan Burchard event about PQOs, prolific quality outputs, PQOs, prolific quality outputs. As a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a man or a woman who is always looking to do your best work, what is your most prolific quality output? If I was to ask you the question, like, what are your top three gifts that God gave you where you should be spending 60% of your time in a day and a week? 60% of your time should be spent where? To really move the needle in your company, in your business, and your life, what are your PQOs? So for me, this is one of them, podcasting. Podcasting is one of my three things, right? Training and writing in the business world are the other two. I know this. If I'm delivering a great podcast and you listen and you change your life and I reach you and you send me an email, you share this episode and I can fulfill my mission to reach 10 million people through podcasting, speaking and writing, then my purpose and my mission and vision in life will be fulfilled. But I ask you, what is your PQO? What is your prolific quality output? When do you do your best work and where do you do your best work? And leadership is part of that. So I want you to think about how are you spending your time most effectively because leaders are very busy and you have to be uber, uber focused so you don't get distracted by the little things because the latest research shows when you get distracted, it takes you 12 to 16 minutes to get back into what I call your genius zone. Your genius zone is that zone where you kind of have this energy bubble where you can be in your head and you're so focused on the task at hand that nothing else matters. And that's being able to compartmentalize and really, really get into that zone. And the, the last one, number 10, uh, is just great leaders set high expectations for themselves. Matter of fact, they set higher expectations for themselves than others have for them. Let me repeat number 10. Great leaders set higher expectations for themselves than others have for themselves. Now, I love studying the, the pedigree of a leader. Where did they come from? How did they ascend up the ranks potentially? In the training world, in the sports world, a lot of times it, a trainer just became like, you know, the, the administrative assistant or uh, became the assistant general manager or became the general manager. But, hey, the skill sets are different. Leadership is a specific skill set to be able to lead, and I talked about them today. But when it comes to leadership, I think the best leaders in the world have the highest expectations of themselves, and they have to uphold their standard more than anyone could ever imagine. So I ask you the question, how do you do that? What are you doing to hold yourself to a higher standard than what the world would say, or even your team should say? Because the last I checked, if you want success in your job, it's not a 40-hour-a-week thing because if you're putting 40 hours a week in, just to be blunt, you're probably not putting enough time or energy in. You might be like, well, yeah, if you're working smart. The bottom line is today it's tough. It's challenging in today's workforce. You've got to put time in. You've got a team around you, and it's like you're always on. But what I want to really, really encourage you to do when you think about your expectations, not just business-wise, I want you to think about expectations for your own self, your own self for your, your physical training. Like, how are you working out? Who are you working out with? And when are you working out? And are you ever working out with your teammates? Maybe even once a month. Train with your teammates. Go for a walk at lunch. Get out there to the gym and train with your, 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 you know, your fellow colleagues. Your own mindset. What are you doing? Are you listening to podcasts like this on a regular basis on your drive in from work? When you hit the airport, you're going to go on a six-hour plane ride across the country. Have you downloaded the episodes that you believe they're going to most resonate with you, which is going to help your leadership? Are you showing up, as uh, my friend Joe DeSena said, 15 minutes early to every appointment, right? Joe DeSena recently spoke at my uh, TD Mastermind Retreat here in Coronado, California in February, and he talked about um, always showing up 15 minutes early to any appointment. So it doesn't matter if you're new to your game or you're a 25-year vet, show up early to meetings, and then always do more than is expected. 
always do more than is expected. So if you want to continue to lead and you want to grow up the ranks, then it's going to really, really take some extended effort and expectation for you to continue leading at great levels. My friends, those are 10 points on leadership, and I hope they help you. And I want to hear from you. Maybe you've got some others, and this is certainly not an exhaustive list of all the leadership points because the bottom line is when you're a leader, you're dealing with other human beings. And um, I'll just end with this. Are you willing to do the work of real leaders, of real leaders, you know, the nitty-gritty stuff that's dirty, Because it's not always a fun job. It's not always glamorous when you're a leader. People don't see the hard times you got to go through. They don't see the decisions that you have to make or the cuts that you have to make because you're constantly looking at P&Ls and and budgets or the, the chemistry of a team. But I want you to think about this. Don't be burdened by things. Be burdened for things. Because leadership sometimes feels like a burden Don't be burdened by them. Be burdened for them. It's not about you, leaders. It's for them. It's for the vision. It's for the mission. That's why guys like Simon Siddick, when he talks about leaders eat last, leaders eat last because it's about your team. It's about your cohorts. It's about your colleagues on that. And that's called servant leadership. You know, what do your people want? And then always remember this. Leadership is not a title. It's not a reward. Okay? It's a responsibility. It's a responsibility that you have to you have to take very seriously because as you ascend up, you become a leader. It's never about, hey, I'm the leader of this organization or the head coach or the GM uh, or the, the head honcho. No, it's a responsibility to make my team better. It's about them. And if you're doing that, if you're making it about the organization, not about you, then I believe that you're going to be a great leader. And they'll end it with this. The late, great Coach Warren Wolf, my high school football coach, said this. In life, you're going to do something. You're going to either lead, follow, or get out of the way. What are you going to choose? Choose wisely, my friends. Peace and God bless. Keep leading.